it is a beautiful but crispy morning we're already getting frost and they're actually calling for snow next weekend so this may be the last saturday i can take snowman out for a cruise so i better get the these quarter fenders in there and mount it on the truck Okay, welcome back Twin Stick Garage. So this channel is all about me working on old trucks, looking at old trucks, basically all things trucks. And if you're a fan of the channel and you've been following for a while, you'll know that the main project I've been working on this past few months has been the Smoking the Bandit replica truck. So this is a 79 Kenworth that I'm doing up in the spirit of the 1974 one used in the movie. And I'm getting pretty close. If uh, you've watched the last episode, you'll know that after three years of grinding away on this truck, I actually got it out for its first drive and it was fantastic. Albeit a short drive and there was a reason for that. The main reason was, is the fact that these, uh, there's no fenders over the drive tires. Now, the movie truck didn't have fenders over the drive tires. And I suspect they just figured we want to make the truck look kind of cheap, like uh, Bandit and Snowman didn't have a lot of money. And it was just kind of a plain Jane truck. But I think it was an oversight. And the main reason is, is because what will happen is your drive tires will pick rocks and road dirt up. And they'll spin them up and throw it at the back of your bunk. Now in this case, I worked awfully hard trying to sand this down, paint it, and then I had this vinyl wrap put on. Now this vinyl wrap is very soft and it wouldn't take much to actually start putting dings and dents in it. So the reason I didn't want to drive it too far is I wanted to get some sort of fender on this truck um, before I actually go for a good drive. Now the fact that there's snow coming next weekend, I figured this might be my last Saturday. So luckily Lesko was able to order me in some fenders. Again, there's no, uh, there's no fenders on the movie truck, but I needed something that was functional, but I didn't want it to stand out. So that's why I went with the black poly instead of the stainless steel or chrome ones. I mean, there's, there's three different styles of fenders you can get. You can get quarter fenders, which just kind of cover the front of the, your front drives here. There's half fenders that go halfway to about here, which is what these mounts are for, and I'll eventually have to cut those off. And then there's full fenders that go, that either wrap around individual drives or just go up and over the whole, the whole mess. Those are the most functional for a show truck because that way you don't throw rocks when you're just bobtailing around without a trailer. But again, I'm trying to make this up as accurate as I can to the movie truck. So I figured this was the best compromise to go with something, just quarter fenders to try and stop at least the, the rocks from coming off the primary drives at the back of the bunk, but then black so it kind of fades into the frame and almost looks like the tire. So we'll give that a go. I got to drill some holes in the frame, which is going to be painful, but necessary. So we'll get that on there. We'll get those mounted. Uh, a few other things that I need to do and then hopefully take it for uh, for one last drive before we park it away in the shop for the for the winter. Okay. Is that it? Yep. Okay, so these are these are pretty simple. Nothing too high tech here. So essentially that's the the fender and again kind of matte black to match the flat black black frame and it'll go something like that now these are the these are the stumps i was talking about or the, the mounts so i'll drill holes in the frame as i was saying to bolt those on there and then this is how it gets mounted on there pretty pretty easy and it just gets clamped just gets clamped so yeah, something like that should look good. And then there's these little, I guess, top fenders or top mud flaps that go on there like so to give a little more height and to try and catch, to catch those last few rocks. Yeah, that'll be good. Now I'm going to have to figure out 
where to drill the holes. So, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there was a, there was a corroded section here, and this is where the original uh, fender mount, front mount was for the half fenders. So that seems to be about the right place and it'll cover up some of that corrosion. So I'm thinking something like that, right in the middle of the frame. I'll mark that out. Very fast, Argyle. I don't care what anyone says. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, mark that out and start drilling. boys and girls I always say I like learning new things and today I learned how to sharpen drill bits yeah, try that because it took a few rounds of sharpening to get those holes all drilled but got her done now wasn't too too bad sit in the car are you from Boston not very high tech, just a giant clamp. Oh, don't you cuss on this here radio. I apologize to all the friendly folk who were listening. Just put the little additional mud flap on there and we'll call it done. I could take these off at shows. It's just that one bolt and just slide it off the post. Maybe that's what I'll do. So it's movie correct. Oh, when it's sitting. Yeah, I don't think that takes away from the look of the truck. But hopefully, like I say, hopefully protects the back of my bunk. All right. One side down, one to go. Okay, next up what I wanted to do was I put all these new U-joints in. Man, it must have been over a year ago out in the snow. Well, of course it was over a year ago because I didn't have the out of the shop yet and I haven't put any grease in them other than what what I put in just for assembly so give snowman a good grease job here oh yeah they were pretty dry and one thing I noticed as well from just that little short drive last week is oil was sprayed um, out of this pinion seal so that's another thing that's going to need fixing I'll just have to drop the drive shaft undo that nut pop the yoke off and then pop that seal out and put a new one in there. But that's what happens when you have an old 40 year old truck and you start driving it again. You end up finding, you end up finding stuff that's leaking, but no big deal. Everything can be fixed. Just time and money. I also got to shoot some grease into the slack adjusters cause they're brand new. And then what I'll also do is fire up the air compressor and I'll put the uh, hook it up to the anti-smoke valve air up the truck and then I can chalk the wheels and then I'll release the brakes and then I'll adjust the slack adjusters as well uh. okay so now the brakes are released so it brought this in so now what needs to happen is I need to adjust this uh, called a slack adjuster it takes the slack out of the system and you cinch simply you go till it's tight so basically you're going to have it turn it so the shaft is going to go out and apply the brakes um, the brake shoes against the drum and that's tight and then i like to do i was taught to do a quarter turn back quarter turn or a third of a turn something like that just so they're not dragging and then you just want to get this guy to pop back up and then that's uh that's adjusted it's ready to go now when you're down here as well doing your inspections you want to just make sure that it doesn't appear to be any loose bolts or anything kind of crooked or bent or missing or loose or any air leaks and you should be good to go okay next up i've been meaning to mount the headlight surrounds and I went and got some fancy plastic ones 
they're uh, replica ones and they're obviously shinier but keeping with the the old school motif i wonder if i should just put on the, the one that's got a little bit of, of road hits on it i think that would be kind of cool i've still i've got the metal one on the other side but one thing one challenge i had with this side was these these studs or stumps or mounting blocks or whatever you want to call them for the four screws they were too long so what i did was i zip cut the three of them and then this one was actually broken off and then I, what i did was i built it up with jb weld because i read somewhere that you can actually drill and tap jb weld now they don't need to be necessarily tapped because it's just a screw but what i'm going to do is now that it's dried and hardened i'm going to give it a little bit of a clean face cut it off something like that and then I should just be able to oof, dusty. I should just be able to mark it out and drill it yeah <laughs> and then put the screws in and that should hold quite nice coming up good to read that stuff And uh, what I wanted to do here was the emblems. So I've had a handful of these Kenworth emblems and I was looking at the movie truck and there's two styles. You can see it sometimes these are, the bottom part here is black and some part, sometimes they're just all the same color as the Kenworth letters. But the movie truck appeared black so I actually painted them and that actually turned out pretty nice. Check that out. All right, so we gotta go ahead and get these mounted on the truck. Oh yeah. 10 cents worth of spray paint, and they look like new. Oh yeah, and that's what I'm working on over there, trying to extract that fifth wheel plate off of the Duke. Just having a hell of a time. If you wanna see more, go check out my Patreon. Okay, so if you've been watching the channel for a while, or if you're an aficionado of 70s Kenworths, you know, well even the, the 80s and 90s Kenworths, you know that these hood badges belong up here towards the front of the hood, something like that. But if you're also a fan of the channel, you'll know that the 74 truck used in the movie didn't have them where they were supposed to be. It had them centered over the fender. And you'll know that I'm trying to make this truck as movie correct as I can, so that is exactly where I'm going to mount them. So I'll mark that out and drill the holes, probably measure twice, cut once, just to make sure I get it in the right spot because this isn't going to be forgiving if I drill the holes incorrectly. All right, so I'm just trying to figure out exactly where this goes here. And what I notice is the K is just back from the edge of, the, of this bottom turn here. So probably something like so. I almost think it looks better lined up with where the uh, the point is, but we're trying to make it movie correct, so I guess I'll I'll set it back just slightly, something like that. Well, there's nothing scarier than drilling a hole in your brand new paint job. Oh man! You know what? I'm gonna get my headlamp. Again, Milwaukee's not a sponsor, but sure wish they were. I know I say that a lot. I actually won this Milwaukee headlamp in a golf tournament. Yeah, so now I can see them. Ah. Oh. <laughs> completely wrong, but completely movie correct. Okay, so next, next job on the list is to bolt this cover plate over the, the fake toolbox. Now, this particular truck, obviously, uh, some of them actually had a functioning toolbox on this side, but this one, obviously, there's no floor, and the cover plate is bolted on, so there was no access to it. It was just an empty shell. And you can see that I actually took the primary air tank 
Uh, there was one underneath the passenger seat on these Kenworths and I transplanted it out of the cab and I put a new tank here that I strapped in the frame to make use of this space. So I'll go ahead and put the cover plate on. Now what's interesting is, like I say, this one's bolted on. And it matches the 74 used in the movie. But if you take a close look at the 73, the 73 actually had handles here. Now, one of the theories, someone sent me that the, there's this guy out there that really studies the movie trucks, he's even crazier than me. He actually identified the fact that the 73 had the handles here. So what I'm thinking is because typically the handles and the wing nuts is for easy access and you see that on the other side where the batteries are. So you can actually just take the cover plate off and get access to the batteries to give it a boost or charge or whatever. So the fact that on the 73 it had that, his theory was because he also looked at the fuel tank and the fuel tank on the 73 had the fill cap at the front. Which is very odd for a sleeper bunk because why would you ever have the fill cap underneath? It'd be really hard to get in here to fill up the fuel tank. So his theory was the 73 was actually a day cab truck and meaning there's no bunk. And typically on day cab trucks, the fuel tank is underneath the passenger door, which would make sense because the fill would be here. So what he thinks happened was they moved the fuel tank backwards they put a bunk on the truck, and then they had a step that they got from a uh, from another truck. Must have been a wreck truck that had it was actually a battery box step that they bolted on there, which would explain why the handles are there and would explain why the fill cap was there. So that that was a very interesting. Uh, I've never noticed that before. So this guy's even crazier than me, like I say. But the fact that uh, that those two things. I could get on board with perhaps the 73 was a converted uh, converted day cab. So I thought that was interesting. So I thought I'd share. Okay, I'll go ahead and put these bolts on here. My God, I need a new pair of jeans. <laughs> Spending all my money on trucks. Nothing left for uh, work clothes. Ugh. Done. Man, that looks sharp. All right, I think we're ready to go for a ride. So I've aired it up from the shop air. So we'll see if it see if it starts. Got a little bit of smoke, but not as bad. Being able to drive it out right away and having the air cleaners in the right direction. Oh, it sounds nice. up and then take it out for a snort. Parking real nice. But I went to get a custom plate and I wanted to get snowman so I went to the registry place and I said is snowman available? She types away and she goes no, taken. I said okay how about uh, band 2 B-A-N-T-W-O and she goes no, taken. I'm like, who the hell took band two? That, that one still boggles my mind. So we tried snowman with a zero instead of the O, and I tried every kind of derivative or iteration I could think of, and I just couldn't come up with a custom plate, so just got a regular plate for old snowman. Bummer. Oh, and special thanks to Joseph from Minnesota. Look what he sent me. 
Oh yeah, that's my new favorite hat. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I rewired the jakes. Okay, no jakes today, darn it. Well, that's okay, the drive will still be nice. Yeah, I just figured I'd give a quick clean to the windshield glass here because I couldn't see anything last week when I drove it. And this stuff's getting, this is pretty sandblasted and busted up, so that's, a, that's gonna be a future episode, I guess, is swapping out those. Never done it before, I don't think it's that complicated. I think you just pull this, uh, insert out all the way around and then you pop the glass out put in new rubber and then throw the glass in and push that back in but just another thing I need to learn how to do <laughs> and okay Cummins I take it back you start pretty damn good too not quite as good as it can act, but pretty sweet it's uh it's a shame that it was operator error putting the air cans upside down to kept you from starting last time what a idiot oh what a loser okay so this is a uh, take two so check it out nick joseph got me the snowman hat and frank got me the uh the, the snowman driving gloves so hopefully the driving's a little smoother this weekend <laughs> and i'll make sure i slow down for that wicked bump that's pretty bad <laughs> hey we'll actually be able to hear you this week not like uh Last time with that lapel mic, where all you could hear was me. Alright. Sorry, I can't keep her steady. Rides a little rough on that uh, fixed jump seat. to clean the windows for you. Oh, sorry. 
I guess gotta guess how fast we're going. Take it for a start, so I'm glad I got her out one last time before. 
where it gets parked all winter. Do you want to try driving? next weekend I guess I better park this thing and start doing some yard work huh yes all right I had my fun 